Greetings everybody and welcome to our next demo. Um, today we're going to talk about user management. Um, why would you want to use user management? Well, there's a couple of different scenarios you, you'd actually want to use this for. Um, number one, what if uh, you want to extend your scheduling capabilities out to the entire organization? You have uh, certain field offices that exist uh, that have their own uh, reporting infrastructure, their own reports, their own policies, all of that little stuff that goes on. And each regional office wants to have the ability to handle scheduling themselves in their own little worlds. Um, with you, of course, the CRD administrator as the grand ruler of them all. Other cases where you have multiple people who need to schedule reports, even in a smaller organization, and you want the ability to uh, them to be able to make their own schedules, log into CRD, and do what they need to do, even if it's the case of there being multiple uh, administrators. That's the whole gist around the user management console. So without further ado, let's take a closer look into it. If you go to the system tab and then go to user manager, it brings up the user manager console you'll see here that there is two different types of authentication you can use. There is CRD authentication and then there's Windows authentication. Um, let's talk about CRD authentication first. With CRD authentication, you can create CRD specific users that are specific user names, user groups um, to CRD itself. Um, and it's pretty easy to set one up. All you have to do is go to add user and simply give the person uh, their credentials. We'll call this person Billy G. So once you've given that person their uh, user credentials and they're all set to go, you also have to decide their security role. We'll get into security roles in just a second. Um, but suffice it to say, you simply pick from the drop down list the type of role that you want them to have. The log on automatically with this user, that simply means that particular installation that you're using right now um, will always use this new user you've created as its default user. And RIA access, that stands for Rich Internet Application. This refers to CRD Web, which is the web interface for CRD. There's a whole nother demo for that one. But suffice it to say, that option basically enables you to ha give access to that program or that segment of the program um, to that specific user. And if you no longer want that user to have access to that, simply uncheck the box there. Again, we'll talk more about that in the uh, CRD web demo. Okay, next, we'll take a look at Windows authentication. Now, Windows authentication uses your Windows Active Directory users and your user groups to actually pull in users. All you have to do is simply browse down to the ones that you're looking for. Select from your domain. Enter in your domain name. Then select the particular group that you want to pull in, if any. Select the username straight out of there, and then assign them a security role based on the groups that you created in the user manager. And finally, you can also decide whether they have access to the rich internet application, CRD Web, as well. Okay, now that we've picked our different types of users, um, now we need to look at what they can and cannot do. So first, let's take a look at, assign, at groups. So with user groups, uh, you can decide based on these group permissions what the user has and does not have access to. Go ahead and just click the add button here to add a user, add a group, give the group a name, give it a description, and all that good stuff. Now here's where the fun begins. You now get to decide specifically what features in CRD they have and do not have access to. 
this case, let's make a user group that can make schedules, that can delete schedules, and do things that a normal user would do, but will lock down anything that involves some administrative stuff, like compacting the database, activating, deactivating, that type of stuff. Okay, so then next, we want to take a look at what kind of destinations do we want to restrict them to. Click on the Destination Restrictions tab, and now you can select either allow all destinations, obviously, so that they can use all of the destinations that they, you have purchased and are available, or you can restrict it to only specific types of destinations, disk, email, printer, fax, whatever you want to restrict them to. Now, if you really want to, you can also uh, only allow assigned default destinations. So if you've already created default destinations, Clicking that triple dot there, you can actually restrict this group to only have access to a specific type of destination. So once you select that type, click OK and apply, and you're all set. So now that user group only has access to that type of destination. It's a great way to keep things secure, especially if you have certain users over here that are sending things to that SharePoint directory, where a SharePoint directory B needs to be reserved for these other users. Keeps there from being any type of confusion and also makes sure that the right information is being sent to the right place. Good idea to lock that down. Finally, you can also set up blackout time. What if there's specific time frames where the entire system is down for maintenance or where no reports and no scheduling should be done of any kind? Well, you can set blackout times so that no matter what, if they create a schedule during that time period, it's not going to go. See, all you got to do is simply pick it out from the drop down list and you can, using the same type of schema as custom calendars, pick out the time that you want to be in, want it to not run. All right. And finally, you can also restrict custom tasks. You can allow all the custom tasks, as, said usual, as, as I said a bit earlier, and also you can allow only certain custom tasks. These are the different categories that you can restrict or allow. Cool. So once your user group is set up, you have your user group together, then you can actually go back to whether you're using CRD authentication or whether you're using Windows authentication, you can simply assign that group, assign that user to that specific group. All right, now, what if you want to pre-make your schedules and then assign them to users so that way it's already there, they don't have to go through the wizard, they don't have to tinker about trying to create a schedule themselves. You just want them to, A, just have a schedule they can log right in, right click execute, or maybe manipulate the timing or two. Well, you can assign a schedule to a specific user. So let's go ahead and assign a schedule to John Doe over here. Simply select that user that you have there. Click on Assign Schedules. Nice little window will pop up. and It'll display the schedules that are assigned to him and also all of your available schedules. Simply select the schedule that you want to assign to John Doe. Click the right arrow, and there it is. It's right over there. John Doe will only be able to see his schedules that are assigned to him. He can't see any of the other users at all, unless you give him permission to see the other people's users, the other people's schedules. Typically, using the user manager, a lot of users will set up a system in which they have all of their users across the entire organization there and they've assigned them to specific user group types, either separated by department, user group, or whatever. And each user group has a certain set of permissions, like they can only create a schedule, edit schedules. They can only do the things that they want to do for their particular department. On the flip side, you can even set it up where you just assign them the schedules to each specific department, to each specific group, and all they can do is edit them. I mean, all they can do is run them on demand and, and that's all she wrote there. So all depends on how you want to set it up. And with the user manager, you certainly have the flexibility to do so. All right, well, that's all I've got to say on the user manager, and I will see you guys in the next demo.